Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the electronic control on your range. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to replace this part, we will need to disconnect power to the range. So to either locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuses. And we'll also have to access the back of the range, so you'll need to pull it forward so that we can get out the back panel. Now that we have the power disconnected to the range, we're going to pull it forward and then we'll access that upper back panel, remove the screws that secure that to the cabinet. And just lift it away at the bottom and lower it down and then we'll set that aside. Now with the upper panel removed, our next step will be to remove this lower access panel as well. So remove the screws along the sides. And there's one at the top as well. And just tilt that panel back and lift it away from the tabs in the back cabinet. Now with the lower panel removed, you can then tell whether or not that accessory kit has been added to the terminal block on the range already, and if it hasn't, you would need to have removed that panel to do so. There are wire terminals that go to both the red, white, and black terminals on that terminal block, as well as a ground wire and a new ground screw in that kit. That is for surge protection or arc protection for that new clock. So if it hasn't already been installed, you just line those up. The wires are all coated the same color as the main wires from the cord itself, red, white, and black, and the green ground. If it's already on there, you can discard that portion of the part. Now next, we'll need to remove the wire harnesses from the electronic control. So simply depress any locking tabs on those connectors, and pull them off a single wire on the right hand side, pull that straight off, there's also a harness connector on that right side, again release the locking tab, pull the harness off, and there is also a short pigtail connector there, again release the locking tab, separate the harness, and make sure that this one doesn't fall down inside. And that will expose four screws that secure that assembly to the control panel. So we'll remove those four Phillips head screws. We can lift that assembly away from the console and then we can do our repair. Now if we're replacing the electronic control, we'll need to remove this overlay from that control. It's actually in two pieces, so we want to very carefully peel away top layer and if we peel it carefully we won't put any creases in it and then we'll be able to reuse it. If we damage it you will need to replace that overlay which does not come as part of the electronic control. So carefully Lift it off. Now with it off, we want to make sure that the individual pads are nice and clean. And if they're not, you won't get a good contact because those are actual contact surfaces. So you can take just a pencil eraser and just gently clean those if they're dirty. If they're not, just leave them alone. And then we'll carefully set that aside, reuse it on our new control. Now when installing that overlay on the new control, we want to make sure that we line that parallel with the edges. and to make sure it's firmly adhered 
to the new control. And then we can reinstall it in the range again. So just carefully place that control into position. Line up the screw holes, install the retaining screws. Just make sure that that wire harness support doesn't get caught under the edge of the mounting bracket for that control. That control needs to lay flush on those two metal straps. Now next we'll reconnect all of the wire harnesses. Again, those that have locking tabs make sure that they're engaged fully. as well as the harness connector for the door switch. Now with all that in place, we can next put the back panel on. Now when reinstalling that back panel, we wanna make sure that we tuck the top edge of the panel in behind the lip on that console. Leave the two outer tabs on the edges out and line up that screw hole in the center. Install that one. And line up the rear corners. and then put in the rest of the retaining screws. And in this model, we need to engage that lip on the bottom of the panel, these tabs that are protruding from the back. Make sure that's engaged. And then we'll flex that panel just enough so that we can tuck the top edge underneath Just make sure that screw holes all line up before you tighten any screws. Then snug them all up, and we're now ready to push that range back into position. Now we're ready to reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.